Hi guys, PJ here. Today we are fitting a next base dashboard camera into a Vauxhall Adam. Uh, the car is a 2017 model. Uh, it's a very straightforward car to work on. In fact, they're actually based on the Vauxhall Corsa. So basically this is going to be very similar to my other video that I've done on the Corsa. You're going to need a couple of bits and bobs. Your camera, a memory card and also a fitting kit, a wiring kit. When you unfit, pack your fitting kit, you've got your main power cable and a fuse spur which plugs into the fuse box to give you the ignition switched power feed. Now on the Adam, your fuse box is here in the glove box and you've got two rows of fuses. Normally the ones on the left hand side are powered all the time and on the right hand side you should find one that goes on and off with the ignition. I'll cover that in depth in a minute because the first thing you've got to do is get your power cable out and prepare it ready for fitting into the roof lining which I'll skip to right now. Okay, this is the power cable that comes in the box, in the fitting kit. So it's uh, from that, yeah. And this is the end that plugs into the camera. With it, in the box, you will get this filter. This is to stop interference, especially on DAB radios. So just open it up, it just clicks open, there's two little tabs. Wrap the power cable around it, and away you go. Then move along, and what I personally do is put some cable ties around the cable. This is to hold it into the headlining so it doesn't slip down. Snip them off, as you can see, and then after that, put some electrical tape around them just to stop them being sharp. Yeah? So you want about three evenly spaced out across the cable so it holds into the headlining. Okay, so with it tucked up, get your little, uh, little bits that you've tucked up, pull the headlining down with your fingers a little tiny bit and just shove them up. Yeah, so go along with the cable all the way to the edge here, to the corner, and then when you get to the edge, get that last one in, you know, a bit tight, just be careful with your headlining, you know, it's not very strong, don't go at it like a bull in a china shop, just be careful with it. You get to the plastic pillar here, you want to get the corner of it up, just get a plastic little leverage tool. Like so. So just so you can tuck it behind. Now spend a bit of time here because this is very fragile and you don't want to mess anything up behind it. So it's going to take you a bit of time just to run it down and tuck it all nicely behind it. Follow your power cable down. So put it down behind, below the trim and down to the side panel. And there we are with the cable tucked safely behind the trim there. When you get to this little plastic side panel here, you've got to be a bit careful. You need a plastic uh, leverage device such as a Bojo tool. You can buy these on eBay. Uh, do not use a metal screwdriver, you will damage the plastic, it will look horrendous. So just put your little bojo tool down the side, yeah, and then a pop. There's some like plastic poppers. There you go, look, you can see that one. Just all the way down it until it comes adrift, yeah, it will come off. Pop, 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 there we go. Put that to one side and you'll literally be able to pull this plastic panel off. You might have to move this rubber out of the way to tuck your cable behind it. And there we go, panel removed, yeah? So you've got all these big plastic clips all the way along it. They are quite tricky, but you've got to be careful you don't bend it too much because you'll snap it. So there's our power cable. I'm going to tuck that now down through here, and you're going to come out at the fuse box, because basically if you put your hand in, you can go all the way around, look, to here, yeah? So you can get your power cable all the way around to the fuse box. And we're going to earth it onto this bolt here. Okay, so basically we're just going to remove this little uh, TX25 bolt from the side here. Quite tough, it's never been out before. If it's been out before, they're a bit looser than this. Once you've removed this bolt, you can pop your, your earth cable behind it to give you a nice, nice earthing point for the camera. I'll show you when the bolt's out and it's done. And there we are. Bolt undone, earthing point put behind it and put back in again. Now, although it's sold in a plastic bracketed place, there is metal behind it. At this point, go ahead and tidy up some of your excess cabling, yeah? You want it nice and tidy, nice and neat, so nothing gets trapped or, you know, crimped in when you shove everything back together. Tidiness will save you a lot of future problems, okay? So it may seem a bit pedantic, but believe me, it's not. If you don't want a trap wire for it to short out on or anything like that, and at the end of the day, if you're not sure about doing this type of job or you're worried about damaging your car, it is worth taking it to a large professional company because they're insured. So if they do break your car, it'll just get repaired. If you break your car personally, you've got to pay for it to be repaired. Just bear that one in mind, yeah? Okay, moving across now to the power. We've got our power cable coming out of the uh, side that we threaded it through here. And we're going to test to see which fuse is ignition switched. To do that, you're either going to need a multimeter, such as 
this, my dilapidated old one there, or one of those little test screwdrivers with a little uh, bulb in the end of them where you, you press, press on the circuit and it lights up. Now, the first thing to do is keep your ignition off, yeah, and get your multimeter or your test screwdriver. Okay, so we'll go ahead and test some of the fuses. Now, on this particular car, like I say, there's not many that aren't going to be ignition switched. So if we test this one, for example, the voltage there is at 12 volts, so that's live all the time with the ignition off. That circuit is no good. You need your camera to go off when you take your key out. Likewise, if you move across to any of the other ones, they are all 12 volts. However, on this particular model, now bear in mind I've done a lot of these cars, if you go all the way up to the centre, to the 10 amp fuse, you see it right at the top there in the middle? 12 volt, and another one, there you go. Zero voltage, that is perfectly good for using for the camera. The camera will go off when you turn the ignition off because that circuit only comes live when the key is in. So now what we'll do is turn the ignition on and check it again. And there we go, 12 volts. And that is, on this particular Adam, this right hand fuse here at the top, okay? Now bear in mind, depending on the model, year and spec of the Adam, the fuse box layout will or could be different. You are gonna have to check the fuses to make sure. Don't just grab that fuse and assume it's switched because this video shows it, uh, it may well not be, okay? So you just double check it before you do anything. Right, now you've seen that's the time that that switch is live with the ignition. Go ahead and turn your ignition off. And get the little adapter that comes in the box, the little fuse spur, yeah? There we go. Now the fuse that's already in there runs your camera. And the fuse that we've just tested in the fuse box is going to be pulled out and put next to it in this slot. Okay, it just bullet connects on, look, it just shoves together. So go ahead and remove your ignition switched fuse can be quite fiddly just pull them straight out there we go and put that fuse into this adapter now remember where you got the fuse from you don't want to plug it back into a slot that uh, it didn't come from sort of thing otherwise all of your electrics won't work on your car so push that in quite stubborn there we go All pushed in yeah so you got two fuses the original fuse you pulled out and the new one for the camera take this and plug it into where you unplugged your ignition switched fuse just shoves in just like a fuse would do yeah there you go you've now got your power and your earth ready for your camera so go ahead and tidy up all your excess cabling there we go all cabling tidied up we've cable tied it and uh, Basically tucked it nicely away and cable tied it to some of the framework inside so it doesn't rattle around or fall down into the footwell. So like I say, tidiness is the key to a decent job, okay? At this point, you can go ahead and put your fuse box cover back on. And before you put any more bracketry together, test it. So plug your camera in, yeah, and give it a test before you put this side panel back on. Right, so we've put a camera on the window there with the sucker that comes with it and we've plugged our little power cable into the side. Go ahead and put your ignition on and what you're hoping for is that your camera switches on. And there we go, it does. So it's on an ignition switched circuit. You are now ready to put your car back together, click your little trim panel back on and away you go. Now your little trim panel, like I say, it's on sort of plastic clips so be careful, just shove it all back on. So bring your panel back on, start at the top, you want to go straight across with it, yeah, don't bend it in or anything like that, just straight in at the top and then work your way down and click it in. That's your side panel back on. Then you can go ahead and put your rubber trim back. And to be honest, that is it, you're finished. If you've got any questions at all on this car or any other, please drop me a line in the comments below and thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.